kinsfolk and acquaintance. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought this sorrow. In verse 49, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye know that I must be about my father? Why Christians miss God? Why Christians miss God? Why believers are you a christian are you a christian how do you know what makes you know you are a christian what makes you think you are a christian because you are in church praise the lord now the bible says now let me give you a scenario the bible says every year there was a feast in jerusalem and Jesus and his mother kept going to that feast every year. But one time, they went to the feast. When they were returning back, they, they went in group. This family will go with the kids. That family will go with their children. So they all move together. It's like we are going to the same destination. So, and we are families. Okay, ten families come together and let's go. So they kept doing that every year. Group of families will go down because it's quite a distance. So, and they have to go either on donkeys or they go on foods or they go on some camels. So, they discuss along the line so they don't get bored. So, they will go every year like that. But the Bible says, this time around, they went. But when they had, the parents of Jesus returned, they got to a particular destination and they discovered that other people were discussing with their kids. They looked for Jesus. He was not around. There are people who think God is still with them, but he long left them. To assume is to be consumed. Assumption leads to consumption. Analysis leads to paralysis. You must have that understanding. There is something about God and it is fearful. Please listen to this. There is something about God that I fear. Can I say it? The Holy Ghost never announces his departure. God will leave a man without announcing it. Judges chapter 16 verse 20. The Bible says Samson said, I will shake myself like other times. And he did not know. The Bible says he wished not that the Holy Ghost has departed from him. The Holy Ghost can leave a singer and the person is still singing and people are clapping. The Holy Ghost can leave a pastor and the pastor is still preaching and people are excited. The Holy Ghost can leave a businessman and he's still seeing profit. He thinks God is with him. A wise man said, sometimes the footsteps of God that we hear is not God around us but God walking away from us there are people who have lost the spirit some have lost the anointing some have lost grace by little carelessness they still assume that they are Christian they still believe that they are Christian but I'm here today to tell you that if God has left you or if you have left God there is going to be a return connection i said there's going to be a reconnection there will be a reconnection every day that's why every minister of god everyone who is preaching the gospel must understand that results can be a function of mercy The mercy of God is not the approval of God. That God is showing you mercy. You say, okay, if I'm a sinner, why are they promoting me in the office? If I'm a sinner, why are they promoting me? Okay, if I'm a sinner, why am I not dead? Okay, if God doesn't love me, why does he give me testimony? It's a function of mercy. They missed him. And I'm going to be very fast about this. 
What happened? And how do many Christians miss God? There are crusades I have prayed about. Oh, I'm going to this crusade and I will plan and plan. And just like two weeks to the crusade, I will hear God tell me, where are you going? I said, to this crusade? He said, yeah, okay. And I said, no, Lord, that okay doesn't sound like an approval. He said, yeah, that's not my will for you now. Cancel it. I said, look, I've, I've told the people, I've already informed. It's okay. That, 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 that's how the Holy Ghost up. He doesn't struggle. He says, okay. I said, but Lord, cancel it. But we have spent some money and I've informed people about it. Okay. That's him. My spirit will not strive with man. He's a calm spirit. He says, okay. Sometimes I tell the Lord, I'm going to so and so place. The Lord says, All right. I said, no, I'm sorry. Can I go to so and so place? No. The Lord, you said, All right. Because you had made up your mind. Now you came back to ask me. No. I was praying for a madman one time in the north. The man was coming with force. They chained him. I said, lose the chain. And they lose the chain. I was about to speak in tongues. I said, Lord, I'm going to lay hands on him. He said, all right. And I know how he works with me. I said, no, Lord. Should I go and lay my hands on him? He said, no. Uh -uh. He said, get a tambourine and begin to dance around him. I said, can I get a tambourine? And they gave me a tambourine. And the madman saw me. And I started dancing around the man. You are dancing around a madman. Who is mad? <laughs> Mentally. Am I speaking now? If you are to reason that with your five senses, if you are conscious of your five senses, you cannot walk with the Holy Spirit. Because most things God will tell you to do will be against your human senses. And my eyes were shut. I was dancing. Close my eyes. I was dancing. When I opened my eyes, the guy was dancing with me. That was the end of madness. Why? I obeyed him. What I came to release upon you is a close relationship with the Holy Ghost. I said, What I came to release upon you is a close relationship with the Holy Ghost. As you stay in your house, you will hear God. As you drive your car, you will hear God. As you sit in class, you will hear God. As you sit in your shop, you will hear God. Amen. As you walk on the street, you will hear God. Amen. God will open your ears. Amen. I said, power will open your ears. Amen. The Holy Ghost will speak to you. Amen. I said, He will speak to you. Amen. I said, He will speak to you. Amen. You don't serve a dead God. Amen. You serve a mighty God. Amen. He's the same yesterday. Oh. He's the same today. Yeah. He's the same forever. Yeah. When God says yes, oh. no man can say no. no. When God lifts you up, oh. no man can bring you down. Oh, no. God is on your side. Hey, Power is on your side. Hey, Glory is on your side. Hey, Rip the one shot fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Take your seat. Why? Sir, the Jesus that started the journey with his spirits did not complete it with them. Many believers had the Holy Ghost start the journey with them. So much fire. There are some of you, in the, in the, when you got born again, if you tell a lie, you will weep. You will cry. 
hey, what have I said? But now, you lie naturally. It just flows. In fact, when you tell the truth, you are surprised. Whenever you tell the truth, you are shocked. I just told the truth. It's not normal. There are people, when we got born again in church then, brothers have where they sit. Sisters have where they sit. They separate them. When they say, hold someone's hand for prayer, if you, are, you turn and say, sister, blood of Jesus. There was this genuine, it wasn't a pretense. This genuine refresh of fear. But today, it says, because iniquity shall abound. People, people do things and it doesn't mean anything to them. Am I talking to somebody here? It's normal. Ushers can steal money from church. It's normal. People can tell that people can dupe church. It's normal. People can lie against another person and they're in the same department. It's normal. In those days, why? Because the Jesus that started the journey with them is no more with them. With them, but it's no more. I tell God every time, What will make you leave me? Is it ministry? Then let everybody go. Is it fame? Is it popular? Is it anything? Let it go. But I want to walk with you step by step. Am I speaking to somebody here? Why did they miss him? Number one, the Bible says, Watch me now. The Bible said they went every year as the custom of the feast was. They saw it as a feast. They saw it as what? A feast. The first reason they missed him was they saw it as a feast. People, what's a feast in the Bible? Celebration. Excitement. The usual thing. When serving God to you becomes normal, your life becomes nominal. When your life is nominal, your destiny becomes minimal. When serving God becomes usual, 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 then your destiny becomes casual. And when you are casual, you become a casualty. When serving God becomes passive, then you are about to pass out. You must get to a point. Whenever you come to God, you don't see it as a feast. You see it as an encounter. I am not just coming to look at the face of the pastor. I am coming to church for my life to change. I'm not interested in what that sister is wearing. I'm not interested in the car that that brother brought to church. I came to church because, oh God, if you don't church me, somebody will mock at me. If you don't change my story, I am no yet to go. The doctors have given up on me. My friends forsake me. It is not a feast. It is an encounter. I am tired of poverty. That's why I have come. It is not a feast. It is an encounter. I'm tired of being single. I want to get married. That is why I have come. Men have deceived me. Women have deceived me. It is not a feast. It is an encounter. I have tried my effort. Yet I am still backward. I have come to God. It is not a feast. It is an encounter. Oh God of heaven. I am not looking at the face of anybody. I am looking up to you. For they look up to him. And their faces were lightened. And they were not ashamed. It is not a feast. Somebody shout is an encounter. Sit down. There is a group of people I avoid in church. I avoid them. I dread them. Hello? I avoid them. I dread them. You know the kind of group? Can I tell you? 
the group of people that become familiar. There are people, if you are talking, they will write. That's that they are shaking their head. Mm. Mm. Run from such people. As you are talking, mm, correct, correct. They are co preachers. When man of God is even praying, they don't say amen. They just close their eyes like that. The man say in Jesus' name, they say, Jesus' name. There's no childlike, baby like heart. And I told you, familiarity brings familiar spirit. They, they saw it as a regular event, as a normal feast. A lot of people have missed God because when they come to church, they see it normal. Why there are some other people right here, they are sitting, their heart is boiling. God, today is today. If you don't touch me, I will touch you. That was the woman with the issue of blood. He said, he, He's passing here. He said, If he doesn't touch me, I will touch him. There were a lot of people in the time of Jesus who were waiting for Jesus to touch them. But the woman said, If I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made enough is enough some people came to show their clothes some came to show their car but I came to touch him Holy Ghost if you don't touch me I will touch you if you don't call me I will call you if you don't reach me I will reach you it is not a fish it is an encounter let me tell five people you need an encounter Miss God when the things of God are no more sacred before them. Take your seat. When the things of God are no more sacred, people read their Bibles today yawning. Ah. Am I talking to somebody? The guy wakes up on the right side or on the wrong side of the bed. I don't know what where, where, where I keep hearing the wrong side of the bed. I don't know if any bed has the wrong side. If he has the wrong side, call the carpenter to, to fix it. I hear that a lot. Say people wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You know? And the man wakes up in the morning. And that, look at the way. And there are people after they have prayed in tongues, that's how they have in their Bible. She Who will God speak to among these two persons? No, I ask you. You have two kids. One of them is stretching. Another is attentive. Who will you give instruction? The guy that is yawning. You may tell him to buy a spoon. He will go and buy a shovel. What am I trying to say? Anytime you come to God's house, let there be a level of expectancy. Don't come like you have come before. Don't hear God like you have had him before. Don't study like you have studied before. Pray like it's the first and the last time. Fast like it's the first and the last time. It is not a feast. It is... Do not fast like you have been fasting. What, what, one thing that made Samson's destiny wasted was casualty. Samson commanded power literally, naturally. It was around him. So Samson's life was business as usual. Don't forget, if you are normal, you'll be nominal. If you are nominal, you'll be what? Minimal. You are usual, you'll be casual. You are casual, you'll be a casualty. You are passive, you will pass out. And guess what happened? Samson will finish uprooting gates of cities and jump on a prostitute. Power was still there. It will, it, it, I, I'm talking to you, there are people who now sit down in church with malice in their heart. They live with it. 
let me say this to you what takes people to hell mainly is the sins of the spirit malice pride this end time you think everybody commits fornication there are people even the devil tempts them they act like it does not exist it has lost value you think everybody steals you think everybody's a thief bring billions for some people it, they won't compromise their faith but what kills people is the sins of the spirit anger pride lying malice the bible calls emulations emulations competition variance lasciviousness huh? the bible has english there is one they call evil concupiscence <laughs> the sins of the how many people don't you greet as i'm talking stand up walk to that person and give the person a shake give the person a hug don't let someone take you to hell since you have decided not to go yourself i'm talking is there someone now that you are not talking to stand up go and greet the person do it now i said do it now there's somebody you are not greeting stand up look around the church for the person go and greet the, or else you're looking the sins of the spirit who are you who are you i won't talk to him again who are you what arrogance what pride what bravado i won't talk to you again i will never greet you who are you you are like a vapor that appeared and disappeared. You are like a moist. A little flower just sprouting up. Who are you? That you have become so mesmerizingly arrogant and pom pompotically proud. Who are you? Malice. I'm hearing this strong in my spirit. That there are people here. Who are not receiving from God because of malice? I'm hearing it now. Malice! There is nobody in my life I don't talk to. There's nobody I don't talk to. There's nobody I don't talk to. There's nobody. Some of you say things that you're not supposed to say when you're angry. You hurt people. You say statements. In life, it's not everything that comes to your heart that you say. Listen, don't forget. In this life, what we have in our mouth is blood, but what we spit out is saliva. What he have is what? If any time you are angry, you keep spitting out blood, you will soon run short of blood. People keep things not to hurt the other person. A lot of believers have taken Christianity. Have you not seen people who will carry Bible in their hand and branch the house of a boyfriend, commit immorality, carry the same Bible and come to church? Have you not seen? Okay, let's drop that. Let me ask you, where did you sleep last night? There are people who are internet fraud stars, they call them Yahoo boys, who after they, they do people, they buy a car, bring the key to pastor to dedicate. You see young ladies who carry pregnancy and they are printing wedding card. The girl is already pregnant and wants to stand on the altar. Am I talking to somebody here? There was a marriage like that that was to take place here. The person was already pregnant. I think some weeks old. I said, I'm not joining them. I walked away. Marriage day, wedding day. My elders were begging. I said, case is closed. No marriage. It was revealed on the wedding day. This girl is few weeks pregnant. Wedding, and it was, she was getting married to a pastor. I asked the 
pastor, how did she become pregnant? He said, I don't know. I said, this must be the visitation of the Almighty. For her to be pregnant without your knowledge. And my elders, for more than two hours, everywhere was scattered. Me, I was in the office having a good time. Scriptures cannot be broken. I said, I will wear that on one condition. Take off that white and put on brown. And she had, they had to look for brown from anywhere. And when I came out, my mouth indirectly said some things. Some of those who are that wedding can understand what I said. I said, I'm not supposed to be standing here, but thank God she's wearing brown. I said, this will be an example. I'm telling you. I've been to a wedding before. As I got there, God said to me, the girl is four days pregnant. I turned, entered my car and went to go and rest.